So I'm doing two sermons in one. Now, we want to talk about the grave. You remember? That was yesterday's sermon. We talked about the cross on Friday. John, I went to the grave. Today we do the resurrection. Give me Psalms 4920. Psalms 4920. Psalms 4920. It says, Man that is in honor and understands not is like the beast that perish. Amen. And we said on Friday that everything about the cross, the resurrection, the grave, all those things are bound to revelation. Absent of understanding, it's a historical fact. You know, when I was in Israel, when you go to the, the, the various sites where Jesus was buried, where he was born, all those sites, if you, if you go to them. In Israel, they are basically historical sites. Are we, are we together? That's why you'd be surprised that if you go to Israel, there are very few Christians. Very few Israelis are actually Christians. Very few are believers. Yet, the sites are with them every day. Every day, they see Calvary on their way to work. Every day, they see everything that was there. They see it daily, but it is of no effect. Because if it is, you have no revelation, you can confidently say that, I know Jesus died, he rose again, that's it. But the power will be transferred. Now, there are three things I never told you on Friday. Sour. How to access the power of the cross. Number one is to receive the death of Jesus. You must receive his death. What is receiving his death? It is accepting that he died. Are we together? Number two is, you get deeper in understanding. You get deeper in understanding. And number three, you appropriate your inheritance by faith. Number two, you get deeper in understanding. And number three, you appropriate your inheritance by faith. That is how you receive. Number one, you receive his death. That's how you access power. Number two, you get deeper understanding. Number three, you appropriate your inheritance by faith. Hebrews 6, 12. Tukuhapo. In a sermon that you be not slothful, but followers of them eh? who through faith and patience inherit promises. Hallelujah. In a sermon translation in English that in faith you can choose to be lazy. Amen. Now, why am I teaching these three things? Because we are getting deeper understanding today. Sawa, So the cross to Lielewa, we saw the video. Who didn't see the video? You didn't see the video? Okay. Sawa. God is good. I'm now confused. We'll see if we'll see it again. Amen. Sawa, <laughs> sawa. So there was a video we, that, we, that, that, that we saw on, on Friday. Because what we saw on Friday was not just the passion of Jesus, but we saw what happened in the spiritual realm. Are we together? Because something happened in the spirit. Because whatever is happening when the world is dark, Jesus is going through something that we can't see with the human eye. Because if they saw, they would have begun to pray. But they were not seeing it. Are we together? So the passion of Christ shows us the level of suffering he went through physically. But it doesn't show us the spiritual side of what happened at the cross. God is good. So maybe if we finish um, everything on time, we can just put it on, 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 uh, on a queue. Let's go to the grave. So Jesus dies. When he dies, he goes into the grave. Sawa, sawa. Romans 5.12. Romans 5.12. It says, wherefore, as by one, man, by one man's sin, by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all. Basically it says, by one man's actions, sin entered. That was Adam. And when sin entered, death entered. God's plan for man was that man should not die. Are we together? That was God's plan for mankind. When the moment Adam and Akula, the fruit, then death and sin enter. Because the Bible says what? The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So Jesus had to die physically. Now, this is the building of faith. Because I've always said this before. I'm going to ask a good question. And this is a religious question. Why do we get baptized? Answer me based on what you were taught. Don't overthink. Eh? To remove what? To remove original? Original sin. Now, I always have a question. 
But why is it easy for everyone universally to wake up in the morning and believe that we have original sin? It's very easy to wake up and say, all of us have original sin. Why do you get baptized? Original sin. The Bible says by one man's sin, by, by one man's action, Adam, everyone got or original sin. No one disputes that. But why is it that we struggle with the other part? That by one man's obedience, give me is it verse 13. How many, how many 11? Let's go back to 11. Let's walk with it because it's here. Uh, Jesus. Leo, ikitu mumei kile mkono. Yekile mkono, please. We know that you say that if by one man sin entered the world, by one man's obedience, all were counted what? Righteous. Why do we believe very quickly that to con our original sin? But if you are told that Jesus died for you and therefore you have original righteousness, we don't want that one. Here what Otakanguskia. We want original sin. That one we like. Original sin, we take it in the morning. You give birth to a child, Nambiwa, this child has original sin. And we take it. Hallelujah. Good morning. But why can't we believe that by one man's obedience, the same faith you believe original sin, why can't you believe original forgiveness? I'm saying this because the basis of understanding the power of Jesus is by understanding the truth of what Christ did. If I can believe by faith that Adam sinned and therefore I qualify as a sinner and the Bible says that Jesus is greater than, than Adam. Now, why can't I believe that by Jesus being made righteous by God but by faith I am the righteousness of God. Now, let us read Mark 8, 31. Scriptures in Mingi, God is good. Romans 8, 31. Oh. Thank you for being awake. Ah, yeah, Romans 8, I mean Mark, sorry, Mark, Mark 8. I love Romans 8, 32. It's one of my favorite scriptures. That's what I say, Masana. Mark 8, 31, it says this. Mark 8, 31, it says, And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected of the elders, and the chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And be killed. Hallelujah. Na fundisha hii leo kwa sababu, we never talk about what happens at the grave. We never talk about Jesus literally had to die. Because Jesus could hang on that cross. The father could give him everything. And he could hang and say it is finished. Alafu waambie, ebu mu nishukishe. Nishukishe ni nende? Home. Sindio? But after all that, he receives, he says, finished. Then the next thing he says, father unto you I commend my spirit. I release my spirit. And he gives up ghost and does what? He bows his head and he dies. So we understand that there's a part that ends when the punishment comes. But the highest level of punishment was death. And he had to die a physical death. I need to believe that if Adam ate the fruit and by that I was called a sinner, then Jesus dying by that fact, I should not die. What do I mean that I should not die? There should not be death in my house. God is good. Death of my dreams. Death of my finances. Death of my health. There should not be death where I am. That's why I said this, that you must believe as a believer, you cannot die before your time. And what is your time? The day that God sends you an, an SMS, and a kwambia, leo ndo siku. Good morning. Imamu ya kustuki ati uli kufa, no. Atuluku mamuka tu, you wake up and you're in heaven. Ati, na huko mapangiwa lunch. Moses and another there's no table. You came too early. No. No. Are we together? We leave this earth on our terms. Death was defeated. You leave this earth when you finish your work on earth. You don't leave this earth because someone said you go. Who said? One of I read a story of this lady, they call her Saint Bakita. That story many years ago. Very powerful story. Bakita was taken from Sudan to Italy. And I love that so it blessed me one time so strongly. When she went to Italy, um, she's Sudanese. God is good. Yeah. 
in Italy. <laughs> Munaelewa where I'm going with this story. God is good. Amen. She was very colorful in Italy. Amen. And where she was working, she was the only one. She was during the World War. And one time, there was always a siren. And the siren was to show that the, or whatever, the, the troops are coming and they're coming with their, with, their, with, their, with their planes to drop what? Bombs. So there was always a guy on watch out. Aki watch bomb, aki watch, aki on andege in a, in a kuja, he sounds a siren. Everyone goes into bunkers and they hide. And these guys pass the bomb as they go. Siren ni kapigwa. Everyone went to their, to their bunkers. Bakita akabaki akifuanguo. So guys came from the bunkers and found this African hovering there like nothing has happened. They asked her, didn't you hear the siren? Couldn't you hide? She said this, that they can shoot their guns, they can drop their bombs, but God decides if I die. Amen. Three times, three times she didn't hide. The fourth time, the whole village didn't hide. <laughs> Where is she? Now because of her conspicuousness, she could be seen. Ako. Yes. A whole village was saved because of her belief that she can't be killed. Are we together? Death was defeated. That is why it's good for us that death was defeated. You leave this earth on your terms. Mambo ya tunastukia lunch time moko binguni mi stakio. God is good. Are we together? Now, we must understand this, that the devil controlled, at the fall of Adam, the devil controlled death and the devil controlled the underworld. That was Lucifer's domain. When Adam falls, the devil takes control. Now the devil is controlling two things. One, Adam has given him the power to reign on earth. Adam has a transfer power. Number two, the devil is controlling the underworld. Now, the underworld is dangerous because the devil knew because no one can go there. It meant whatever he took there, no one could take. You remember? Whatever was taken there, the devil knew he could not take. Whenever I've talked about spiritual warfare, I've talked about this. Now the devil has three main kingdoms. The kingdom of the sea, the kingdom of the land, the kingdom of, of the air. The kingdom of the sea is Lucifer's largest kingdom. It is the largest kingdom, which is headquarters, the kingdom of the sea. The sea has a queen. God is good. The, queen, the sea has a queen. Now, the queen of the ocean, her work is very simple. Everything that Lucifer steals, he hides in the ocean. Everything he hides there. Hallelujah. Now, don't assume if you swim in the ocean, you'll find those things. <laughs> Are you together? Yes. In fact, I say the ocean, but truth is this. Spiritually, we normally say it, it is beneath the ocean. It's beneath the ocean. Are we together? So that's where Lucifer hides. So when Lucifer is stealing wealth, Lucifer has no wealth of his own. He steals. Hides it in the ocean. When Lucifer is stealing lives, destinies, hides them in the ocean. Everything he steals is, is the ocean. The ocean is Lucifer's headquarters. Are we together? And in the ocean, it's a story for another day, but let me say. In the ocean, the, the devil has got everything that can copy what we do. Everything. Because he can't create. Lucifer is not creative. Are we together? So in the ocean, there are factories. They make things. That is why you can be given a gift, perfume, and you fall in love. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Gift, give you mic. Hallelujah. Are we together? Yes. The worshippers, they can come, they can bless you. And the worshippers can come and tell you, ah, Alex, he gives you a very good watch. The watch was not made here. The Rolex, but not made here. Made from the ocean. Are we together? God is good. It is the biggest kingdom, the largest kingdom that, that the devil has. The ocean is well run. It is where anyone who wants to thrive in the kingdom of darkness, they have to go to the ocean. Which doctors go to the ocean to get their power. They don't get it anywhere else. But for you to go to the ocean physically, you must have given blood as an individual. You can't access the ocean without blood. You must have given a human sacrifice to access the ocean. So those who go for meetings in the ocean, sana sana, give blood somewhere. Not sana sana, they did. Give me John 3.6. There is a lot to learn today. I don't know what to do. Jonah, 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 Jonah. We move forward here. Give me, no, let's go back to verse, verse, from verse, 
Verse 2. Let's move from 2. Mm -hmm. Arise, go up to Nineveh, the great city, and preach into unto it the preaching that I bid you. Next, verse 3. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word that came to the Lord. Now Nineveh was exceeding great city with three days with, for a three, three days journey. Verse 4. And Jonah began to enter into the city day a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Verse 5. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. Verse 6. For the word of God came unto King Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and shut in the ashes. Verse 7. You know the story. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying that let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Verse 8. But let man and beast, let's jump to verse 9. I'm going to 9. Yes, good. Uh -huh. We, who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger and we perish not? Continue. I want us to read the, the story. And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God depended on the evil that had said that he would do unto them and did it not. The story of Jonah is born from what? What happens to Jonah the, first, the last three days before he goes to Nineveh? He's swallowed by? Eh? What does Jesus say about his death in reference to Jonah? Akita yeah. Fadalini, please welcome to the meeting. I'm going to the Bible. <laughs> Open your Bible. Open, 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 open Hosea, chapter 6. Hosea 6, 2. After two days, will he revive us? In the third day, he will raise, up, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. What is Hosea prophesying about? What? Two days he will revive us. In the third day he will raise us up. God is good. Jonah being in the belly of the fish for, for three days. Are we together? When Jonah comes out, the first thing he does after his recognition is this. He comes up and the first thing that he begins to do is understanding that they need to be a revival first. God is good. They need to be what? A revival. Do you know why? If you read the story of Jonah, he says that I was in the belly of the fish for, for, for three days. I went to the depths of the ocean where there is no return. Where there is no return. Meaning that Jonah understood what the grave meant. Because at times we think that things happen by chance. No. Jonah said that, that those three days he's spending in the, in the belly of the fish. Those three days. He's understanding what the grave is. And he's understanding the power of being raised up. So two days Christ is in the grave. Two days he's reviving. The third day he raises us up. The three silent days are found in Hosea. Two days is revival. What is revival? I have to get a mission of revival, crusade. Amen. So a lot of people pray this prayer. Lord, give us revival. Revival is coming to Kenya. What is revival? Yeah? And what is to raise up? Kufufuka. To revive in Kufufua. To raise up in Kufufuka. Hey, God is seeing you. God is seeing you. God is good. The devil controlled every part of the underworld. Two days here, Jesus is going to take that which is yours. Two days, he's setting the record straight. Third day, he comes out with us. Are you together? Two days, he's dealing with the devil. Third day, he's coming out with us. Amen. Amen. Now, I read yesterday that the Bible says that there are treasures from dark places. I said this yesterday. And the dark places are the ocean. 
the kingdom of darkness, where Lucifer has kept everything that pertains to us. Now when Jesus goes into the grave, what does he do? He goes into the dark places and brings out the treasures out of dark places. You can't go get the treasures your, 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 yourself. Because there, there's no return. Only Jesus could go and come back. No one could. Are we together? Because Jesus says, the one who's judging the world has come, that is Lucifer, but he has nothing on me. So in that understanding, when Jesus goes into hell, because of his level of righteousness, the devil is thrown off because Jesus should not be there. But he is there. And he's the only one who can come out of there. No one else can come out. As the book of Luke says, when he died, they saw saints coming out. Meaning all the guys who had died were like in Abraham, like in who? All of them were under the control of Lucifer. God is good. Now, there are five layers of the underworld. Can you look at them very quickly? Number one, Sheol. Those are your notes. Write in your language, you understand? Please. Sheol. Andika blot, andika blot. Kaupu andika shiro, saam andika shiro. Those are your notes. Please write in the language you understand. No one is marking them. Hallelujah. I'm going to mark him. Unless you plan to preach somewhere. <laughs> Unless you want to preach somewhere, then there'll be a problem. Don't talk when you have it. Sheol is S-H-E-O-L. Mulanika nini apu. Shiro. Salanka ubiri mahali useme shiro. Hey, okay. Hey, Sawa. Sheol, or the New Testament called Sheol, heads. Heads. H A D E S. Deuteronomy 32 22. We won't read, we'll just say it. When you die, when someone died, they used to go to Sheol first. That was Akuna Njengine. You die, you go to Sheol. That was first. Deuteronomy 32 22. You die, you go there. There was no hanging around. This thing that people die and they hang around, you only ukora. You die, you go. So, anyone dead hanging around is illegal. And anyone hanging around is not that person, it's a demon. It is a demon. So if at all you have a loved one who comes to you in a dream telling you, come, we drink coffee, rebuke that spirit. Are you together? When they die, they go. When you die, you go. I saw something, this is a bad story, but I'll tell you, because you, you're my friends. I saw a video of a case happening at Makadara Law Court. This lady was fighting with her son over her house. So the son is those sons who refuse to move out. God is good. And he wants the mother's house. So they are fighting over the house. And the mom is in court and the mom is telling the son, you want me to die that you take my house? And the mom said, if I die, I'll haunt you. <laughs> and I saw this, honestly. Every day the truth. Someone dies, they go. They die, they go. That is why we mourn and we release them. They die, they go. Mom, but someone is in the bedroom walking, that's a demon. Miskia? Yes, that is a demon. Let me tell you today. I've told my children, when I die, I have gone. Anyone coming like me is not me. Ni me anana me? But CND. Mimi ni welcoming committee ya Yesu. Hallelujah. Mimi ndo wale takuwa na flowers, tunangoja Yesu, akirudi. God is good. How much am I? Even though I'll be for 80. And I go have one of God is good. Sawa. So Sheol is the first place. You die, you go there. That was the first place. Anyone who dies, go there first. Number two, let the devil control it. Number two, area of the underworld is paradise. Paradise. Luke 16. If you read Luke 16, 19 to 31, you find the story of paradise there. Where you understand the great divide. Luke 16, 19 to 31. Paradise is number two. So it was another level. Eh? Oh, Mugovit, okay. Good. You remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus? You remember? And the Bible says that Lazarus was on one side, the rich man was on the other side. The rich man was in Sheol, and Lazarus was in paradise. The people who died in the Lord went to paradise. Those who died not in the Lord went to Sheol. And there was a great divide. But the Bible tells us that because all of it was the underworld, they could all communicate. God is good. Yes. 
Nikama you're in one room, there's food. Another room, there's no food. You're talking to the one who has no food. That's how it was. So paradise was there. That's why Jesus at the cross, he tells the thief, today you'll be with me in paradise. Are we together? He's not talking about heaven. He's talking about the underworld. Because when Jesus was dying, he wasn't going to heaven. He was going to the underworld. Are we together? So I said, today you'll be with me in paradise. It's today I'm going to the underworld to the Patana paradise. That's why when Jesus dies, the first thing that happens is he opens the doors of paradise. And the saints who have died in the Lord are seen walking in the streets of Jerusalem. You've read it in the book of Luke. Yes, that's what happens. So I said, today you'll be in paradise. I manage heaven, the underworld. But the better part. Number three is the pit. The pit. You find the pit in Revelation 9, you'll read it at home, and Luke 8, 31. Revelation 9, the whole chapter, and Luke 8, 31. Revelation 9 even describes how demons look like. Revelation 9 describes how demons look like. If you want to know how a demon looks like, read Revelation 9. They are very ugly creatures. God is good. Since they had wings like locusts, you men are in a car, they are very ugly creatures. God is good. If you see a demon face to face and you don't know the Lord, <laughs> you are the most ugly creatures you'll ever see. So, so, very ugly creatures. Now, I said the pit. The pit is where demons stay. The pit is where demons dwell. And I won't preach beyond that because the whole story there, we'll have to look at the Bible in different ways. Luke 8, 31. You find it also, the story of the pit. You remember when Jesus finds the man who was bound by chains and he sends the demons to the, to the pigs. You remember that story? What did the demons tell Jesus? Don't send us to the, to the pit. Because that is the dwelling place of demons. Don't send us to the pit. Send us to the pigs. Are you together? The pit is where they stay. That is their dwelling place. Are you together? And I'll say this very uh, clearly that the demons that are in the pit are only pulled out by our desire. They don't come out themselves. We pull them out. Are you together? So if you go to a witch doctor and you want to consult your grandmother who died to understand where the title deed is, what you have done basically <laughs> what you have done basically is this is that you have provoked a spirit from the pit to come. The demons in the pit don't come out by themselves. They were bound there. They come out by our desire. Are we together? But the other level of the underworld, the devil's control. And number four, we'll read this because it's important, is Tartarus. Tartarus. Anyway, it's T-A-R. T-A-R-T. A-R-U-S. Tartarus. Tartarus is now where the angels that had fallen are put. The fallen angels are in Tartarus. Demons are in the pit. Because there's always an assumption biblically or theologically that the fallen angels were demons. No. Fallen angels were not demons. Good morning. Where do demons come from? Nikianza here, Leo Miriam. We live here tomorrow morning. Are you together? That is why when Revelation defines demons, those are not angels, if you read it. They are bound in Tartarus. That's where they are. Read 2 uh, Peter 2.4. We'll put it here. You're to sum up. For the sake, in your Bible knowledge too. 2 Peter 2.4. For if God, if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, the translation here is saying hell, but in the Greek it is Tartarus. Now, other translations, if you read the parts in the New Testament where it talks about hell, you'll hear the word heads. Are we, are we together? You'll hear the pit. But King James translated them all as hell. Because it's all the underworld. But here it's Satarus. Okay. Delivered them to the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Now, if you read First Peter chapter 3, we want to read it today, you find again the story of Jesus when he went down. He went actually to preach to those angels. He didn't go to preach to them salvation. He went to tell them that they had lost. There's a difference. Are you together? Yes. Now, this was Lucifer's great idea. Walk with me here. This is very critical. These angels are the ones that fell. How did they fall? Genesis 6. 
Genesis 6, when they sleep with human beings and create a race of giants. You get it? The Nephilim. Now, what was the devil's plan with the Nephilim? The devil knew that, the, that God has said in Genesis that the seed of the woman shall crush the head of the serpent. So the devil's plan was to corrupt the seed that Jesus should never be born. So if the angels fell and produced an impure breed of, an impure breed, let me call it that, are we two together? It would frustrate or stop God's plan of Jesus coming. Because Jesus could not come in between an angel and a human being. He had to be born of a 100% pure breed. When the Bible says that there is no man righteous like Noah, the translation in the Hebrew is not righteous in terms of holiness. It is righteous in terms of he is the only remaining pure breed. That's the translation. It wasn't about his character. It was about his genealogy. Are we together till there? Are we together? That is what happens. So the devil's plan was that if the race of man is destroyed, then Jesus will never come. And that's why God says, now we have to wipe out everyone. And leave Noah. Are we together? Out of Noah, we need another clean race. Because it will be illegal. Jesus can't be born of an impure breed. That can't happen. Angels were never supposed to be on earth. Are we together? Now, those angels that did all that were bound in Tartarus. Sour. And theirs is done. The fifth place is where the devil does not control. And never controlled. That is Jehanna. So, is kia jina kwa Jehanam. Senior. Yes. Jehanna is not in the control of Lucifer. Has never been. Because Jehanna is where the fire of hell or the fire of condemnation or punishment is. That is where judgment lies in Jehanna. That one is in God's control. Matthew 25, 41. Matthew 25, 41. So the devil is in control of Sheol. Brandeis, the pit in Tartarus. Jehanna was not under his control. Are you together? He couldn't control the prison that was going to chain him. That he could not. Now, when Jesus dies and enters the underworld, it means automatically then, he has gotten a legal right. By being a human being, was the only way he'd get legal right to die. Because a human being must die. When he dies, he gets legal right. When he gets legal right, he enters into hell. When he enters into hell or the underworld, he's now in control of Jehanna. I'm sorry. In, 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 um, in, in, in control of Sheol, the pit, Tartarus, and paradise. All these are now under him. Now no one can disturb him. Now here is the problem. Jesus in hell or in the underworld is an anomaly. Because the devil's plan had never calculated Jesus entering hell. That one he had never calculated. Ever. He had never. In the mouth of Lucifer, God could not go there. Lucifer knew this place is too bad, too dirty, too sinful for God to come. But Jesus becomes sin and enters there. Are we together? I once did, uh, I once talked to a devolution many years ago after her deliverance. And she was telling us a story of one time when she asked a question. This is a very interesting thing. The worship has very funny stories. And she was telling us how that whenever she shall reach for level where she would meet Lucifer and have meetings, good, good morning, and she'd meet Lucifer and have meetings. I said that one time when they were in their meetings, and they're in their meetings in the underworld, eh? but when she was just moving around, she said that there was a big gate that was broken, a very big gate that was broken, like it had never been repaired. And she asked the guy who had taken her there, Kamuliza, what happened to this gate? And that guy tell her, told her, never ask that question here. There was a day. There was a day. Amen. And he said, there was a day. There's a man who came here. We can't say his name. When he came here, he broke those gates. He took everything. We have nothing here. But never say that name here. And never ask that question here. And she told me, but Victor, the thing Christians don't know, is that we dev worshippers we fear you guys more but you never know that is why dev worshippers do what they do i'll name you 
yeah, some are in the kingdom of darkness, they fear believers. Let me tell you, from some of Hebrews 6, when it says, don't be slothful. Salvation does not want laziness. Can we come together here? Does not want? Doesn't want laziness. She was telling us that in the kingdom of darkness, the ones who are assigned as intercessors, one interceding, Kwa matatu, kwa lori, kwa basi, kwa barabara. They are always chanting intercession. And there's always a spirit walking near them to ensure they don't stop to intercede. If they stop to intercede, they are inflicted. So mukunek, ata munafanya, I mean, you have gone for meetings, for prayer meetings and whatever, and they are in the congregation. Na kazi yawa kapali ni, kuongea bitu, ili watu toke timing. But we don't sleep. In fact, we wonder. We have less power than believers and we do more. And so if believers use the power they have and not be slothful, the devil has nothing. So that's what she said. In after, she's delivered. Now, I don't know where she went. I don't know if she died or she went back. I have no idea. It's the last time I saw her. But we deliver about three, four hours. This is story to pay as a hook. Hey, sorry, your story. Good, good morning. You know the worshippers who show us the the truth. We were talking with my the other day of my friend, one, 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 one of my friends, Bishop. I told you once I employed a girl from Kitale who was a devil worshipper, full in the business. And this girl was sent specifically to him to bring his ministry down and to bring him down. And he was telling me that he met her at a crusade in Kitale, and when he prayed for her, she fell. Now I can move kwa to Ingine. Then I can move to the I'm going to go to the Bishop Akamuliza, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go Then you have a job. We go with you back to Nairobi, you get a job. Testimony, hallelujah! Hey. The worshiper. The girl was telling us that in the house, whenever she goes, she was there to kill his wife, kill his children everywhere. And she was telling us that she had a very long nail here. Very long. You know that girl, she had a very long nail. And she'd walk. So she was like, she used to walk behind my friend's wife in the house. And I find pop, pop. But she said whenever she does that, fire would fall. Fire would fall. Fire would fall. And she was telling us that don't underestimate the power of prayer, number one. Number two, never underestimate the power of preacher covering. Because as she's walking in the house, and I find a pop, and I find a motor, and I find a and Afanya, she could not touch him. But this is what she did. There was a cat that came. Kumtembelea. Ika muuliza. Pastor, anakulanga nini? Akasema, anapendanga nyama. Paka mwambe, nipe nyama. Apea, paka nyama. Anapena nini? Unga ya hostess. Nipeka ugali. Paka ugali. Anapena nini? Mboga za kienyeji. Pena mboga. Na nini ingine? Maziwa. Apea maziwa. Paka yasema sawa. Paka ikakula, ikaenda. My friend, after that day, the poverty he saw, he was coming to my house to ask for onions. When you see a man has walked across Rongai to another house to say, Niseidie vitungu. Niseidie vitungu. I gave him onions. I'm the bishop. I have no food. I have been in difficult times. I have never drank black tea because I can't afford milk. Ah, God is good. The goodness is that that Sunday I was going to preach in his church. Nikianza ministry, kaschana na kakakuja mbele. Same assignment. Alikuwa akiguswa anaanguka. Then her demons come out and try to attack the person who's praying for her. So akikuja nyuma anafanya scan. If she finds something she can use against you, you are finished. Alisema her work was to give pastors jobs. Kazi ya kuchoma maindi. That was her, her work. So ananga anazunguka hivi. Sasa hapo na sisi na yeye. That is the day I'll enter confess I can be a bishop my friend. Hata hiyo njaa iko kwako. Ha ni paka ilikula bwana. Paka ilikuja nikaipea nyama, nikaipea hostess. Nikamwambia bishop that girl should be fired today. Today. Mambo ya kujidanganya hapa ati you are a pastor now salvation Jesus died for her. Let her be saved elsewhere. Not in your house. I'm telling you. He was asking for onions. You know that is serious. When a man is going to borrow onions, Ujaman, your poverty imeka kiasi gani? And he couldn't get money to pay her to go. 
So you're in the house with the worship. Every day. Hey, what a story being my, my friend. She told us stories during her confessions. But she told us one thing. She said, you guys have delivered me. Thank you. But I tell you the truth. I'm going to go back. I'm going back. That's the only thing I know. So me, I'm going back. God is good. shockfully. She said, she said, I'm going to go back. She said, because if I stay, they, are, they will kill me. So I have to go back. Thank you, but I have to go back. Good morning, everybody. When Jesus goes into hell, he breaks those gates. He breaks those chains. He enters. He goes where Lucifer is and takes control immediately. Are we together? Now, let's read this. I want to bring this home. Hallelujah. Give me Colossians 2.15 very quickly. Na ndoko mwana mbianga mwukifanya warfare. Mwamba ya kufanya warfare na woye woye misi yele wangi. Good morning. Hallelujah. Are we talking? This thing of doing warfare na woye misi yele wangi. I never understand it. Because I did the time to go up on one of the Saturday days you were here. And Mike akaniluza swali. Nanga akaniluza. Ati yani the devil will even attack a small child. They can be a mic. This is the devil. The devil has no ounce of mercy. He is the epitome of wickedness. Mercy is a human trait and a divine trait from God. The devil has no mercy. The commander of Kifanya warfare, how for you warfare and come you don't feel like it. Because if the devil finds you on a corridor, he will kill you. So if you find him, you kill him. It says nothing up wakuna katikatikati. Warfare in anger wo ye. The devil has no ounce of mercy. If the devil wants to shame you, he will not pity you because you're crying. If the devil wants you to die, he will not pity you. The devil will take your life, take your children, take your job, take whatever he can get from you without blinking. Then when we meet the devil, nanza kufa fink. Hapana, hey, hey. Nivita tu, hallelujah. We came because you couldn't have shown to fire, kingdom of darkness, fire. Hallelujah. We came to fire. We came because we could not kunyo magic. Oh, fire, fire, consuming fire. Give you to blood of Jesus for free. God, God is good. We didn't get to go bank when I say my blood of Jesus. In case Lucifer go up, blood of Jesus for free. God is good. It's good He knows that you know, and that you are not afraid, and that you are willing to go to war at any time. That's why we cannot be slothful. Salvation you take it by two hands. Or don't take it at all. Good morning. Two hands or not at all. Either you are in Christ absolutely or you are in Christ somehow. God is good. Higher. Why did Jesus die? Why did he go to the grave? Three things. Number one, he went to the grave to fulfill the claims of justice. To fulfill the claims of justice. If he never went to hell, Lucifer and Gesema, by the way, I still hold the keys to death. He went to fulfill the claims of justice. That's the reason why he goes into the grave. Number two. He goes into hell to establish, you and I can come to the letters, to establish the defeat of the enemy and obtain victory. To establish the defeat of the enemy and obtain victory. We are together? Good. How does he obtain victory? The moment Jesus enters into hell like this, number one, he's the only one who has the key, the ability to break the door open. Let us read Psalms 27. Because Psalms, 20, Psalms 24, Psalms 24, 7. Tunaijua lakini atujaijua inasamanga nini? Psalms 24. It says, lift up your heads, O you gates, and be ye lift up the everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Everlasting doors are doors that are not in this realm. Everlasting doors are doors that are in the spiritual realm. Lift up ye gates, NLT. Lift up ye gates is Jesus coming into hell and saying, the gates of hell must open. 
God is good. This scripture is about that. Open up ancient gates. Open up ancient doors. And let the king of glory enter. Ancient doors. Ancient gates. These are the gates of hell. Are you together? So when he's entering in, when Jesus dies and he goes into hell that moment, quickly, these gates must open up. David said this prophetically. Open up the gates and the gates have to open because the king of glory has to enter. Who is the king of glory? Will Jesus tell the gates of heaven to open up his entering? Would he say that? No. He's talking about a gate that no one has opened before. But because the king of glory, he enters and he kicks that door open. And so the first thing that happens is the ones who died in the Lord come out. Please don't break. God is good. Mio, mio. Then he moves in now. Are we, are we, to, to, are we, to, to, are we to, uh, together here? He doesn't open the door. He commands it open and it breaks open. And after that, he takes the key to ensure Lucifer can't close it again. God is good. So when he goes into hell and I'm here, Lucifer, I have defeated you there, but I'm coming to establish, to ensure it is finished. To ensure you have no change. Give me Revelation 1, 8, 18. To ensure you have no change. You can't say you have anything. I have come to satisfy defeat. I am he that lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. God is good. And number three, Jesus goes into hell to do what? To reclaim glory and dominion Adam had lost. He goes to reclaim glory and dominion that Adam had lost. God told Adam, be fruitful, multiply, subdue, replenish, and have dominion. When Adam falls, the devil takes that. No one in time could take it back. When Jesus goes, he tells Lucifer, now I've come to take what Adam lost. Adam lost dominion. I'm taking it back from you. Hallelujah. Adam had the power of a death. I'm taking it away from you. Now I have obtained this for you. Are we together? God is good. God is good. Let us read Colossians. Wa Colossio. Ni wa Colossia, sindo kevo. Ni wa Colossia ama ama ni wa Colossia. Colossians, let me stick to the language that I understand. It says to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you. Colossians 1, 27. Sorry. Christ in you, the hope of all glory. Hallelujah. God is good. Say, Christ in me, the hope of all glory. Amen. That is Jesus in you. The glory of God is Christ in you revealed. Now, Fungo 1 Corinthians 15. 54. This is the longest chapter in Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15. It says, So when these corruptibles shall have put on the corrupt in corruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. The devil's greatest power, write this down. The devil's greatest power is his control of death. In this sanctuary right now, there are many people here who are afraid of death. True or false? Trampiani ukweli. Kuna watu wanaogopa kifu hafa. Sindio? Yes. When anything happens, if you are in a car, hallelujah, gari tupe brakes. Good morning. You know, fear is a bad thing. Because the devil's greatest weapon is fear. And because death is the thing he controlled, he brings that fear of death as the greatest fear. So them had gone to preach. Who called? No, no, why? Why? I'm an Why am I in Jiruko somewhere there? Kesha, going for a Kesha. 
the times was 2010, 11 there. The time when it was a lot of space. You remember? Those days. I'd gone to preach. And we were going to the church where I was going to preach. So from the house, we were being hosted to the church. So we were walking with my friend in absolute darkness. We are walking to Metembea to comfort to get away here by the Leo Nini. You know, you are seeing just here, eh? but we are walking. And I tell you, I went and I collided with a donkey. <laughs> you know, donkeys just stand, they don't move. Nika Dongana na donkey. Ile nduru nilipiga. Nilipiga nduru apo. Hey, you would not believe I'm the one who was going to preach courage. <laughs> and you know Africans are very funny people because Africans run when another African is running Africans run together so I'm even going hey Nikaruka my friend jumped with me so I'm going hey no kumulika tochi ya simu una punde na tuangalia tu punde me tuangalia tu hey no <laughs> Fear. God is good. Fear. The devil's biggest strength is fear. And we fear death because death is unknown. And the devil controlled death because death was unknown. But a believer, you know that death is not unknown because death is not a destination. As a believer, you don't fear death because death is not a destination. That's why death is swallowed up in victory. When you don't fear death, the devil loses the things he can make you afraid of. Are we together? Yes. Remember that. Now, Thessalonians 5.10. The church in Thessalonica. Who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Translation is whether we are dead or alive, we live with him. Amen. But so if anyone dies in the, in the, in the Lord... They have not died. Hallelujah. They have not. If they are in the Lord, they have not died. They are with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, this all takes place in two days. Day one, he's in. Disarms the devil. Releases everything that pertains to every life. Goes to every department of the underworld. Takes every treasure out of dark places. And says, I'm bringing it back. But if Jesus remained dead, if Christ remained in the grave, in the grave is ensuring the devil has nothing else. The devil cannot go before God and say, Miriam must die. If Miriam knows Jesus died for her, Miriam says, no, there's already a tomb that testifies someone died on my behalf. Are we, are we together? When the devil wants to bring death into your marriage, you tell the devil, no, 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 no. Understand something here. Someone already died. A price was paid. Justice was made complete. Are we together? I could not go to hell to obtain victory. Jesus goes and obtains victory by himself because only he had power over the enemy. God is good. After all is said and done, if Christ remains dead, there is no victory. If Christ remains dead, then it's like any other sacrifice given in the old covenant. So Jesus dies. The third day, he now says, I can't even stay here, by the way. I visit too. God is good. I need to go back. The coming out of Jesus is the seal of victory. But to a believer, the cross is important. The grave is important. And the resurrection. The resurrection is the guarantee that victory is complete. Are we together? If he obtains and remains there. You remember when, let me give you a biblical story of, 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 of memory. When Noah sends the raven. You remember? And the raven doesn't come back. Then he sends what? What does he send secondly? Yes. He sends, he sends a dove. When the dove goes, it comes back. Right? With a good report. What does it mean? The dove was a symbol of Christ. Are we together? It was a symbol of Christ. That I can go into the darkest places and I will come back with evidence that it is done. If Jesus had remained dead, there would have been no testimony that it is finished. So you and I would never have the right to call for a miracle, to call for a, ble for a, for a blessing, to call for anything. Are we together? Now, can we read Corinthians 4.15? 15, 15. 
I told her I'm preaching to someone in one. Name it, name Give me 16, same, uh, 16, verse 16. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. 17. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. If we can't testify that Jesus is resurrected, then what we are doing here is monkey business. Because if Jesus doesn't resurrect, then Jesus and Buddha are the same. Have thrown a stone. Amen. But not here, to those who are watching by mistake. If Jesus doesn't resurrect, he's like Buddha. If he doesn't resurrect, he's like Muhammad. If he doesn't resurrect, he's like Krishna. There is no record of any other deity that rose from, from the dead. Only Christ rose from the dead. That is the proof that we serve the one true and living God. Amen. All others died. Wakaoza. Yeah, yeah. Hakuoza. Are we together? But when someone tells you that there are other gods, no, 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 no. Tell me a god that rose himself from the dead. Give me one. They won't give you. They will just tell you the ethics of Buddha. Hallelujah. He was kind to animals. Our God made the animals. Hallelujah. God is good. Yes. They always give you ethics. All this is useless. It is Christ at the end of the day who rose from the dead. If this, as a Christian, if you don't have this, then you have no faith. You have no salvation. I must always remember, he died, went to hell, and rose again. He died, took my sins. Went to hell, took my riches. Came out in victory to give them to me. Hallelujah. The resurrection is this. The resurrection is victory. The resurrection is victory. Why? Because death could not contain him. If death can't contain God, what can contain him? Can poverty contain him? Can a disease contain him? No one. This is what the resurrection means. Huh? The resurrection in itself is victory. Because death could not contain him. Death could not contain him. So, so. so if death can't contain Christ, then can a disease contain him? God is uncontainable. Hallelujah. And when you understand the power of resurrection, is when you understand that God is almighty and all-powerful. But truly with God, all things are possible. Amen. All things are possible. Because when you encounter the, res the resurrected Lord, you understand the power of God. Now, what does resurrection mean? Very quickly. Number one, that God does not lose a battle. Hey! God never loses a battle. If God is fighting for you, you cannot lose in Jesus' name. Amen. If God is fighting for you, you cannot lose. God is never on the losing side. Question I'll ask you today is are you fighting for yourself or is God fighting for you? Are we together? You must remember that. Your CV doesn't fight for you. It is God that fights for you. Your degree doesn't fight for you. It is God that fights for you. Are we together? It is not your skills that fight for you. It is God that fights for you. Because everything a human being has has a limit. But when God fights for you, you are sure you have to win. That is why God can use someone with no skill whatsoever to be lifted. Are we together? That is why you might find in an office there is an incompetent fellow when you had Jewy, Kufinya, Control, Alt, Delete, Kwa Computer. Hajui is a button, ziko happy. Hajui. Lakini si si mo si mo the bank. In any bank, then you shall know hither. Hallelujah. When a control Alt, Delete, yak on everything, you queue. Yak kingi ya anasalimi wana pele kumbaka VIP. When a control Alt, Delete. See where we are, while we're on another video. Hallelujah. Are you together? It depends. And that's the thing we forget. When I'm going into battle, who is fighting for me? And the problem is we fight for ourselves. 
I think I've got good, nego I've got good negotiation skills. I have got good uh, street credentials. I've got to go, no, 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 no. God fights for me. That is why when you have favor in your life, you can enter any office, talk to any person, because favor is of God, not of man. If I have favor, then I'm saying God is fighting for me. Are we together? So either it's fighting for you, or that is why, let me just be honest, and I'm going to say something very bad. Mishan Samir. Mishan Samir. Good. I'm talking to those who are looking for jobs. You know, you can get professionals to help you write a very good CV. Actually, they are there. And you can write good CVs. But a good CV doesn't give you a job. It is God. Christ is enough. I'm very serious. Have you ever tried to believe that if Miriam, if I can get Miriam, Miriam can get me to Mike. And you get Miriam, and Miriam will to Alex. Then one day you meet Mike, you say, Mike, Mike, Mambo. You say, Mike, 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 and I say, Mike, 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 are we together? It's God fighting for you. You can sit and believe God for favor and a transaction can find you from Russia. Someone can call you from Russia and tell you, by the way, I saw your profile somewhere. I saw you are doing something. I was giving a number somewhere. Hallelujah. Quite no longer the testimony in the mic. Mic next to us, Mama will put out testify. Quite no longer the mic. May I get a pair of testimony? May I get someone? May I get him that he was looked for? He got an email, someone looking for him from out of the country. And we have been told you are the one who can help us. A whole government, a whole embassy. There are many people in the field in the country. He didn't look for them, they looked for him. When you have favor, when God fights for you, people look for you. You are sought after. Are we together? When God fights for you, that is why you... <laughs> Hallelujah. Mnanishika. <laughs> When God fights for you, you must know God fights for you. That is why when we praise, we praise because we know God fights for me. I would rather get tired here. I've been praising God. But I know one thing, he'll fight for me this week. Then I sit here and look pretty and I fight for myself the whole week. Oh, sorry, look handsome. I forgot. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. Are we together? I must know God never loses a battle. He can never lose a battle. When God is fighting, victory is guaranteed. When God is involved, when God says, I have taken over this issue, there's only one outcome. Victory. But as long as you and God are cohabiting on the issue, God what if? God what if? God what if? God tells you, finish fighting. You'll find me here, then we continue. I have always, this God told me, me, me many years ago, God has eternity. You have time. In other words, God never loses time. God can wait for you for 80 years until you get it. You are a testimony. Yeah. Good. Yes. God has eternity. That's why God will not force you. God will not fight with you. God knows at some point you will yield and you will tell God, fight. Lead the way. At some point, when I gave my life to Jesus all those years ago, I thank God, I know I'm not that clever. I've done research. I don't think I've that mind. God is good. I don't know how these words left my mouth. I know I'm not this clever. God is good. Because I know the level of self-belief that I had. And I told God this. The day of my salvation, God, yes. Jesus, I have led my life all these years. It has brought me pain, misery, broken dreams, frustrations. I am willing today to try your way. I will abandon my way. Where you send me, I will go. What you demand from me, I will do. Because I've done it my way. Look where it got me. All those things. 
Haleluya. Dabia sema mikrofoni anakuja kutestify. Amen. Are we together? I told him and from that day I made a decision that Jesus leads the way. If Jesus tells me lie down I lie down. Tells me go to you where I will go. Tell me do I will do because I realized something. It was the fastest way to get to destiny. The fastest way to reach where you need to be is by allowing Jesus to fight for you and lead the way. But as long as you're fighting with him, you will get there at 98. 98 and two days. Wakati inye meno hakuna. Mugongo imeenda. Magoti meisha grease. God is good. Don't ask me, oh! Now you're fighting with your great-grandchildren over things. Hallelujah. Nacha niangalia uko wake kuna watu wameangalia kupaya side. Are we together? If God is fighting for you, you are guaranteed victory. No matter what, you are guaranteed what? Victory. Number two, God always has the last laugh. Hey! God always has the last laugh. Yani watu waneza pika, wakoroge, wafanye nini. Wewe na yesu unakatu na sema, Lord, I know with you I always have the last laugh. Because you always have the last laugh. He's the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. God knows the outcome. Even what the devil plans, God knows. God is omniscient. What the devil plans, God knows. God knows the thoughts of Lucifer. And the Bible says that when Lucifer thought of a coup, in the twinkling of an eye, the moment he thought, he never got a chance to fight. He thought. When he thought, he was thrown out. Are you together? The devil's thoughts are not beyond God. God knows everything. That is why God will wait for your enemies to plan and plot. He will wait for them to run around. And God will just say, wait for it. God, yeah, true. Yes. Then you lean back. That's Tagovo, isn't it? You don't talk Tagovo like this. <laughs> you, you'll be pulled. And the very good guys at Tagovo would literally sit and they would lean back almost 45 degrees. And they would let the other guys pull. Now what a pull. Why name? What tan easy. The funny thing is Tagovo and to am a tan sasa. And like vuta kamba easy. Now there you know they have no idea. These guys wanna relax. Now while they wanna mother out like get good guys from the army. If it's a team of 12, 12, six of them can step out. Six of them can and just watch you. Six, the other six are holding. They just look at you. break sweat. Then they come on. One, two, three. One, two, three. Finished. You spend 50 minutes sweating. They took them two minutes. God always has the last laugh. That is why we are never discouraged when the enemy plans and plots and schemes. We are never afraid when people talk about us. Wakisema, oh, Sijuini, don't be afraid. If your kids are being sent home for school, please don't be afraid. God always has the last laugh. Hallelujah. My favorite scripture. You know it. Psalms 2.4. He who sits in heaven laughs. <laughs> hey. Hallelujah. He who sits in heaven laughs. Yes. That is the position. God sits and laughs. God sits with doctors throwing bones and fighting you. And God just was them and God The day is coming. Wait, wait, wait. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. They said you will not work out. Wait for it. Amen. They thought you'll beg forever. Goja too. Amen. Ile siku tu uta... Hallelujah. Amen. They thought you'd be in that place forever. Tutako naomba tukela siku. Nisei idi any fair. Nisei idi any fair. Nisei idi any fair. One time, one day. He was, God says, wait. We go through it. Hallelujah. That's why I normally say, don't complain where you are. Eat that place. Ikule. Enjoy it. It's part of your testimony. I don't complain. When I used to go and preach with the torn shoes, and I'd be given shoes. I had 
have no problems. I have no problem. People gave me clothes. I have no issues. I wore them proudly. Amen. When I used to walk for kilometers to go and preach the gospel, I never complained because I knew my day will come. Hallelujah. Nachekanga hapa na with part of my team, I tell them that the price that I paid for the foundation of the ministry, they are very lucky. God is good. We went to preach in places where unatembea, almost 30 kilometers, to go and preach kwa matope. Ni kunyeshewa. Hallelujah. Umebabana nakabag. You are going to preach the gospel. Mvoe mekuchapa. The ones who called you didn't even send transport to pick you. Ni mechapa hapo kiatu mekua mzito unatembea yungu sasa ni matope. Ni matope. I remember one place, I got to the place like this and the person was angry. Mbana mechelewa. We are waiting for you at, at seven. We've walked 30 kilometers. You're going to come and pick us. Come on, be a sour. So wait, go quickly. Nika chukua horse pipe. Nika chapa viatu. Horse pipe ili matope it 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 in any it talk. Shock on me. One shoe lost the soul on the journey. <laughs> so niki kuja kusimama kwa altar kuhubiri niko hivi. Kiatu imeisha, hakuna so ime, imeisha. Na unatembea pale God of power, what God of power. God of power. And you know the place is high. Everyone is seeing you have no soul on one shoe. They are all seeing it. No meje kaza tu pale. Na sikati you can buy a shoe, bad shoe you travel with it from there back to Nairobi. Ushukie railways, utembee nayo tu vizuri kwa matatu, nenda Rongai. It's the only shoe I had. God is good. Yes. We walked and we preached. Hallelujah. Yes. That is why, personally, I will always wear my blessings proudly. Ukiniona na peleka gari ya 100 million, don't ask me a question. Hile siku nilipoteza soul, where were you? Unyamaze tu? Nimelipa garama yangu, hallelujah. I have paid my price. Sama, useme, hey, anaringa apana, we. Wakati niacha soul ulikuwa? Ni wacha tu peacefully. God is good. That is why I wear my blessings proudly. Because I wore poverty proudly too. Good morning. Una niangalia funny. Na tuwe ni mubiria mutu. Mutu wazema tu mungu fungua mlango sayi. Amen. Yes. I'm very serious. That is why I never apologize when I'm blessed. I never apologize. I don't. Because I've been there. I've been there. Ni mawambia ni kivaa lumia gray. Ni kakua white. Ni kufuliwa. God is good. Imefuliwa, 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 imefuliwa. Imekua white. But you know it is grey ukiangalia nyuma. Juju uku, uku kala. The true color remains. Ya hapa kala yandangi. Lagini hapa kala yanaishanga. Hapa kala ubakia. In, in, longi nakata yandai. Nova tayandai. Every day I'm going to preach the tayandai daily. I remember. Yes. Eh, I don't know how she fell in love with me that way. These are the wonders of God. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know how. Yo, 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 Ata mungu wala maneno yake. Nika pendo watu hivyo. Life, life. Hey, God is a God of wonders. Amen. Mungu wa kiamua. No one refuses. Hivyo watu life, life. Hey. Hata pa this, kwa na mifikiri upointi. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm wondering how she saw me nelo ngia tayandai. And still saw the handsome man. Hey, u mungu wala maneno. Hey, hey. Mungu wala maneno. God is good. Hey, mungu wala maneno. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Hey. Amen. Yes. Musijari. Yes. But ask her. Yes. I am sure she lives like a queen. That one I am sure. Muulize. She will tell you. Amen. Yes. She is spoiled. That's what she did. She is spoiled. Hajui vila kulipa tokens, Astima. Hajui. It's me who does. 
Ata gas ajuangi nani will deliver gas. She does nothing. The price she paid. Holding my hands in town. Na long ya tie and die. Marashi yake ndio yetu. Mi mi tuna marashi yake ndio yetu. So nikitembea na you assume you are smelling the same. But yake imani subdue. Hey. Mungu bwana maneno bwana. Shati nilikuwa nayo mic ya pink ya boxes hivi. Kola iliisha nikapeleka kwa fundi ikataniwa. Unajua kola ikitaniwa wanga ime 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 fura haikwangi flat. So kola imekasirika hii. Uzi zimetoka huku na siko to town hivi amenishika tu mkoona tembea na mita. Eh eh. Solomon anasema don't despise the wife of your youth. Eh Solomon anasema hivyo. Hey, man, God, God is good. He who sits in heaven laughs. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. No matter where you've come from, the outcome is the same. Hallelujah. We are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Amen. Yes, <laughs> Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Oh, number three. <laughs> God always uses the enemy to achieve his purpose over his enemies. God always uses the enemy to achieve his purpose at the enemy's cost. God always uses the enemy to achieve his purpose at the enemy's cost. Yani the, the God sets up the devil. What the devil does in your life is a setup from God. The devil is a pawn in the Lord's plan for your life. That's why I've always said you need Judas in your life. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 to 8. It says, how be it we spoke wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the prince of this world that come to know. Then the, the seven. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Then verse 8 says, which none of the princes of this world knew about. For they, for had they known it, they would have not crucified the Lord. When the devil crucified God, Jesus, the devil thought he was fulfilling his agenda. Yet in truth, he was fulfilling God's agenda. So everything the devil is doing in your life, understand, the devil is being used by God to fulfill God's plan for you. The devil pays the cost. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. That is why we was usifure. Usifu. Usifure. Number four. One day of divine action can wipe out years of the devil's oppression. One day of divine action can wipe out years of the devil's oppression. Second Peter 3.8 to God, a day is like a thousand years. That day he rose again, removed a thousand years, four thousand years of the devil's destruction. One day of divine action can wipe out years of the devil's oppression. Today, in the name of Jesus, may that be the day for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Number five, God's recovery is always greater than what the devil stole. God's recovery is always greater than what the enemy stole. God's recovery is always greater than what the enemy stole. This is what resurrection proves to us. Give me Psalms 630. Psalms 630. Psalm 630. We are there? Psalm 630. Imam. Eh? Kwa nimeanika nini hapa? Mimi ndio mtuzangu. I'm on Psalm 1630. Yeah. Hakuna 630. Now, you look for me this verse then. The verse that says, when a thief is caught, the day that the thief steals, he rejoices. But the day he is caught, he gives back sevenfold. That's the scripture that I'm looking for. Iko happy? Did I 
6.30. Eh? On Proverbs. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Proverbs 6.31. Yes. 6.30 and 31. Eh? Yes. Give me 30. Men do not despise a thief if he still satisfies his soul when he is hungry. Next verse. 31 says. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all substance of his house. That is what happened. When the devil stole from you a feature in hell, no one said a thing. But the day Jesus came through, what happens? He's caught. He has to give how many? Sevenfold. Number six. God ensures the enemy has short-term victories. And the victory of God is irreversible. Eh? God always ensures that the devil celebrates small victories. Small ones. That to not have an fuga school fees. Hey, he's happy. God is good. When you put a home, hey, he's happy. Small things. But God ensures the time he wins, it's irreversible. Job 20. Job 20. Aye. Job, 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 Job. Johanna. I mean, yeah, yeah. Ayubu. Job 20. Yes, it says. Knowest you not this of all, since man was placed upon the earth. Next verse, verse 5 says this. That the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite is but for a moment. The devil doesn't have lasting victory. The resurrection of Christ is permanent. He doesn't resurrect to get old and die. He resurrected and is still alive to this day. God ensures the enemy has short-term victories. Anything the devil does in your life, remember it is short-term. Your victory is long Come. Hallelujah. Today we believe God by the resurrection power that a miracle takes place in your life but ensures an irreversible victory. In Jesus' name. Amen. An irreversible what? Resurrection released power. Hey, you don't have to sasa. How do you ring Resurrection released power. Now, can we look at Ephesians 1? This is what we are going to pray for today. It says what? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, verse 20 says, you know it, verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him on his right hand in the heavenly places. Resurrection releases power. Resurrection releases power. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. What does it release? Power. This power does three things. Number one, it gives you absolute dominion over the forces of the enemy. Absolute dominion over the forces of the enemy. That's what the power does. What is Victor saying? Absolute means? God is good. <laughs> Number two, this, is a, this power does what? It transforms your life. What is to transform your life? Is to move your life from one end to another end. That is transformation. Romans 6, 4. And lastly, this power. I repeat. What do I repeat? The first one. It's the absolute dominion of Christ over the forces of the enemy. The power gives you absolute dominion of Christ over the forces of the enemy. Then you go home, read Acts 2, 22 to 24. Acts 2, 22 to 24. Number two, it's the power of life transformation. About it transforms your life. Sour. Romans 6, 4. Romans 6, 4. This resurrection power transforms your life. And number three, this resurrection power gives you a limitless life. When we began this series, the Lord told me that is his desire. A limitless life. A limitless? A limitless? Life. A limitless life means that every caveat over your life must be broken in the name of Jesus. Every caveat, hallelujah, every embargo, anything that stops you should be destroyed. Let us read John 20, 19. We'll pray with this. It says, then the same day at evening, being the first of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. How did Christ access that room? 
How? He passed through the wall. He passed through the, the wall. Before Jesus dies, there's no miracle like this. After he resurrects, he walks through walls. Now, underline this, please. That they said, uh, yeah, when the doors were shut, the doors were shut. Underline that, please. Give me verse 26, same chapter. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being, and he stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. He entered. Today we are believing by resurrection power that no door stands closed before you in the name of Jesus. By the power of resurrection today we are saying that doors will open for you. You can enter any place you want to enter in the name of Jesus. We are claiming resurrection power, saying that if Jesus went unto the grave, if Christ went unto the grave, and he took the keys of hell, death, and the grave, if he took the treasures out of darkness, and he rose again as proof, therefore I'm saying that there is no door that will be shut in my life in the name of Jesus. Today, doors must open. By the power of resurrection, doors must open. Doors of healing must open. Doors of revival must open. Doors of wealth must open. Doors must open in the name of Jesus. We are not going to knock the doors. We are telling the doors to open. Because resurrection power gives us limitless life. Limitless life is no one can say you don't deserve to get. No one can say you should not be. No one can say it can't happen to you. In the name of Jesus today, it shall happen to you in Jesus' name. No one can say they had locked themselves. But the resurrected Lord was limitless. That same power is in us. This week, in the name of Jesus, may we access frontiers, access rooms, access levels that they said we would never get to. We don't care who is standing on that door. We don't care who said no. We don't care. In the name of Jesus, we are entering. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That human being that is there must move. That demon must move. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you something. Don't underestimate the power of a believer. Never underestimate the power of a believer. You have the power in you to move people for the glory of God in your life. Doors must open today. I'll finish with a testimony. For one of you here, not say the name because if I say the name, it might bring a problem. You are praying one day on a Wednesday. And there was a person in that workplace that was frustrating this person. The Holy Ghost revealed. He arrested the person in the spirit. Called him by name. Because you are frustrating a child of God who is doing the things of God, you shall resign from that job. Utapanda Jomuamo Express. Uende Busia Uuze Omena. Good morning. That was on Wednesday. On Friday before the fellowship. Waprokamura. This person came to me and told me, Victor, today that guy called for a meeting and he said he has resigned. Hallelujah. As a believer, you have limitless power. The purpose and will of God must and should prevail in your life in the name of Jesus. It must and should do what? Prevail. Didn't God say, I will give up nations for you? Didn't he say, I'll give up Tyre and Sidon for you? Didn't God say, we are not praying for calamity. We are praying for the manifestation of our destiny. Are we together? Hallelujah. We are praying for the manifestation of our destiny. For David to become king, Saul had to move. God is good. We are not praying for calamity. We are praying for the manifestation of the will of God. Every door must open in Jesus' name. God is fighting for you and you are victorious. We are applying resurrection power. 
Hu rama shandi karabu shanda baraki de riburi araba rama sandi arabu shanta baraba hu riba seti de maraki de ribush riara ribush sandi de riara ribu in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Just begin to lift the Lord in your own way right now. In the name of just begin to lift up the Lord in your own way right now. Just begin to lift him. Just begin to lift the resurrected Lord. Just begin to lift the resurrected Lord. Take authority right now. Just lift him up. Just begin to lift him. 